Hey guys, I'm John. Um, I'm a conference virgin and feel like an imposter to uh, infosec things. I don't do cybersec things. I think that's just people trying to trick execs to get predictive wrong on their phones. Um, I'm from Tecron. Uh, we make a GPS hardware product. Um, it's a little bit boring, but it is in critical infrastructure and it's in a lot of power. Um, and why that's important is you need to know the time everywhere in the grid so that we don't lose power. Um, that's to do with phase angle measurement. Um, this came from a thing that actually happened, uh, this is a bit of a development floor uh, talk about, uh, we made this product um, and we gave it a 10 year warranty to compete in the market for an electronic piece of hardware. And uh, to anyone who does hardware development, that's insane. Um, but we actually did make a pretty good product and it does stick around a long time. The problem with this is that the employment at um, substations doesn't stick around as long and um, we had someone, I feel like after the B emoji talk that I should probably either throw in cats or my team actually said there was a lack of cats in my talk. Um, so maybe I'll just like switch this up and say uh, cat engineers which result in substation engineers uh, they have some problems. And their problems are, in Vietnam, who buy our clock, um, they hack through a whole lot of bush to get to a substation, to a clock that's been working for five years. And not because the clock's not working, but we've decided to add a new second. <laughs> and this leap second is a big, huge problem for everyone who has uh, timing problems. Uh, so to do that, you have to upgrade the clock. And to have any piece of equipment in critical infrastructure, it needs to be encrypted firmware. And to upgrade the firmware, to include the update leap second, uh, you need to know what the administrator password is. Unfortunately, um, we had a uh, small cat engineer ring us up, and cat engineer said uh, mistakes were made and we have lost the password because we haven't had to touch the clock for five years. Um, so, we, I'm going to talk about quickly um, how w admin password is lost, and that's pretty understandable. Um, how do we actually implement a reset on something that's so critical to infrastructure and do it safely? And this is a bit of a um, kind of what we had to go through, and a funny story along the way. Um, the thing we do is we take an aerial GPS um, timestamp and we distribute it on an old 1950s standard called IRIGB. Um, and IRIGB is a pulse per second with a bit code in it and a pulse modulated width. And NTP, which you'd be really familiar with, what you might not be familiar with is Precision Time Protocol or PTP. And that's like broadcast NTP with hardware stamping and error calculation through the network. And that's really fast, it's amazing, you should all learn about it because it's coming. And IEDs here aren't things that explode, they're called intelligent electronic devices and they were been around for a long time in substations. Yeah, one of the biggest problems of why we lose uh, passwords in substations and critical infrastructure is that clients usually kind of set these things and they kind of forget about them. Um, this is because the really big million dollar pieces of equipment that live in substations kind of get set once, that configuration kind of gets saved somewhere and then they don't touch it for years and years. A lot of assets in critical infrastructure, and this goes for protection control um, of you know, traffic light systems and uh, big water, gas, power. They all kind of rely on standards. And once those things are set and how the company wants to use them as security policies, they kind of don't touch them. To change anything, you need administrator privileges. And a lot of people don't uh, give that out willing. It will be a few customers people at the top, maybe locked in a safe somewhere. But other than that, there's usually a supervisor or engineering permission to control things. Uh, because the device is encrypted, traditionally what they had to do, like um, our poor cat engineer, was send the unit back from wherever it was in the world, and we manufacture them here in New Zealand. Uh, they had to ship them back to New Zealand to get reflashed, which is um, a big problem for them. Uh, there was uh, one case where they literally had to have a substation powered down until we reflashed the reset the admin password and sent the clock back uh, urgent air freight just so that we could get things running again. Uh, time sync is really critical to protection and control. Um, and anything we do or change in this 
uh, is really heavily scrutinized by a client. So they'll send them to testing and they'll try and break them. Um, so, uh, sorry, there's a bit of a cut down talk, but um, one of the things that we did was we, we were deciding on how to do this. Like one of the ideas here was maybe they could ring up and we'd give them a special code and we'd reset the device. But what we did is we did a little internal test. We rang up our admin to try and get some information and uh, much to their disgust, our CAT engineers were very upset that someone was trying to ask for really sensitive information and we were just like, yeah, there's a chance there that um, you know, someone could just kind of hack us through social engineering. Um, we talked about maybe downloading a special arming uh, device on arming software for the device and then we'd have to deal with all the security vulnerabilities with that and we're just like, no, nah, we're not going there. <laughs> uh, a lot of these systems I'm talking about are usually air-gapped, um, hence why they kind of need this time synchronization. Um, there are some dos data centers who use this. Uh, in saying that, that market and industry is changing a lot as everything goes to IoT in that uh, real guys world. So what we did find out about our clients is to be on site in front of some power stuff, you there's a lot of things that have happened. They know you're on site, you've probably made a phone call, and there's a lot of alarm bells ringing as soon as you open the door. We decided that having physical ac access to the device was a really good way of kind of handling this. And so we decided that um, we wanted uh, three things. We wanted to be able to do an arming and have an opportunity to not waste your uh, power station or at least alarm everything in it. Um, do a power cycle and very importantly, nuke all the RAM. We use static RAM in our devices. Um, that's changing in the industry. A lot of devices are using um, app on chip, which means a lot of dyna dynamic RAM and that there's a lot of issues with that. But at least in our fortunate case, we could just nuke the whole static um, section and be like, sweet, you have lost everything. And the reason for that is because our clients would be buying multiple of our devices, going into substations, um, they put one in, um, and then in about five years they decide to um, move it somewhere else, so they'll put another one in there, grab it out, put it in the back of a van, someone could grab it, someone could hook up to our software and start, um, if you did a reset and still saw the configuration, you'd learn a lot about how that uh, power utility or water utility used their um, internal network structure. So we, we decided it had to be wiped. So we came up with arming the reset, um, took you to be in front of the device, you did a power cycle which raises a whole bunch of alarms in the system already, raises everything and the client then reconfigures it with their new admin password, which is amazing for our clients because they now no longer have to send the device back to us to get reset. Um, yeah, so the things we learnt probably is the best thing uh, at this point. The things we learnt um, in protection and control is that there's already a lot of layers of security and what we're seeing right now is IT rooms are getting really involved in the design process of critical infrastructure. Not so much in the US, but the rest of the world and things are getting really connected and smart. Probably about 10, 15 years ago, NTP in a substation was unheard of, but we're seeing that really common now and with the event of PTP, precision time protocol, and redundant um, protocols like PRP, we're seeing that uh, fiber is going to be everywhere. Uh, you guys are probably going to be touching stuff that is the exact same thing inside protection and control systems, which is really interesting. At the same time, for us, it's a huge question of how we develop around that. Sorry, that was a pretty um, small talk, but um, yeah, I hope it was interesting. <laughs>